Hello, and welcome to the Dev Quickie. This episode's topic is, the Parallax Background. Let's get right to it. We are going to be using this Globals Helper class. It allows easier access to the content, sprite batch and elapsed game time. And the Game Manager class, that will bind everything else together. We will use those five simple images, each being one layer of the background. The sky. Some mountains in the far back. Grassy hills. Bushes in the front. And finally a few clouds in the sky. Okay. Let's start by creating a class, that will represent a background's layer. Each layer has its texture. A horizontal position. A depth to tell which layer is in the front and which is in the back. And lastly a move scale, that is doing the magic of moving every layer at a different speed, creating the parallax scrolling effect. We'll add a simple constructor to initialize all the values. Next, let's do the update method, that will take in the amount of movement to be processed. We multiply the movement by the move scale and elapsed game time to get the position change. And we do a little trick to keep the texture on the screen. The draw method will be simple. Using the layer's texture, position and depth. Now, let's make a background manager. It will hold a list of all the layers and make sure they will be updated and drawn regularly. And of course we need a public method to be able to add a new layer to the list. We create an instance of the background manager inside our game manager. Call the update method, as we don't have any movement input yet, we leave it as zero for now. And add the draw call. And finally we will create and add the background layers. Loading the texture from the content, setting the depth, where lower numbers are more in the back. Setting the move scale factor, where lower is slower and zero is without movement at all. Now we just need to set the sprite batch to sort the draw calls by the depth. And with that we are ready for the first test run. Everything looks great. The layers are stacked and drawn correctly. Let's get back to that movement input and create an input manager class. We define a base speed, a movement property and an update method, where we set the movement value based on the keyboard state. If we hold down the D key, we go in one direction and with the A key, we go the opposite way. And again, we add an instance of the input manager to the game manager. Do the update call, make sure it's first, because we take the new movement value and pass it to the background update to get things moving. Okay, it's time for another test run. By pressing D, the background starts moving right, each layer with different speed. Pressing A, moves everything left. The input manager works as intended, but we clearly see, that something is not right. Once the layer moves, the texture does not cover the whole screen. We will fix that next. In the layer class, we will make a second draw call. For that, we need a second position variable. We will draw the same texture twice, next to each other. Based on the first position, the second position will be either on the left or the right side. This second draw call will cover the empty screen space, left by the first. Note that the texture is designed to seamlessly continue, when tiled next to itself. Let's check it out. Perfect. There is one more thing we need to take care of. Look at the clouds, it would be nice, if they were moving independently, without any input. We simply add a default speed to the layer. When optionally set, in the constructor, it will make the layer constantly move with that speed. A small update to the position calculation, and we are set. In the game manager, we set the default speed for the clouds layer. And give it a go. Nice. Look at them flying. Those were the quick basics of Parallax background. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.